Okay, let's get into one of my personal favorites. If, if I ever got in a street fight, and I'm often asked, uh, Mr. Lewis, what would you do if you got in a street fight? I mean, uh, would you use one of your famous kicks or punches or something like that? No. I've had a lot of kicks that landed that did not work. I've had a lot of punches that landed that had no effect. But every time I've applied a finishing hold, whatever the finishing hold may be, it has never, ever failed me. Now watch this finishing hold, and this is how I'd like you to practice it. Now, a lot of times, when you're up against a taller person, and I'm real close to the person, and he's getting ready to shove me, punch me, or kick me, or something like that, I might do something like this. Stand on this side. Now watch, so you can better see this. As soon as I see him making a move, what's what I'm going to do? I'm going to, I'm going to take my hand and cup it right behind his neck. Now, as I cup it right behind his neck, I'm going to drop him down into sort of a front choke. Now watch. I cup the back of his head, pull his head to my chest. As I pull it to his chest, I'm going to spin the neck and lay his head flat against my chest. Watch how quick this movement can be. Flat, lock your head, and sit right down. And you got the big man kneeling down at your mercy in a matter of seconds. Now watch. Just turn this way a little bit. Now watch what I'm doing. Notice I've got his head straight into my chest. I've spun his chin so his ear lies flat against my chest. I'm taking my lock right behind the hairline, clasping my hands. I'm pulling in with my arms and forward with my chest. Guarantee you the big man will bow down to you very, very quickly. That really hurts, and it's very, very fast. Now, here's another one I like to do. All right. Let's say I'm facing somebody. I have the altercation again. Now this is what we call a cross arm naked choke hole. Now what I'm going to do is this. Right up and down each side of your opponent's neck. Lift your chin up, John. We have two arteries running. One on this side, one on this side. Stay away from this windpipe in the front of the neck. What we're going to be doing is applying pressure on an angle. Not coming straight in from the side, but on a slight angle up towards the ear and up towards the ear. See the V that my hands are forming? I'm putting pressure right where my knuckles are touching. Now, as you apply pressure there, what you're doing is shutting the flow of oxygen off to your opponent's brain by squeezing on those arteries. And within a matter of two to five seconds, your opponent will be unconscious. Now, right alongside the neck region here, we have what we call a carotid sinus. Now, if you hit that sinus region hard enough or fast enough or properly, your point will wobble. Sometimes I've had them drop unconscious in a matter of a, a split second. I'm talking about a half of a second. Now, one of my masters in Okinawa is called Seo Ayata. Now, he didn't teach a lot of this stuff when I was in Okinawa. Plus, one reason I'm not real fond of the inside techniques is because if you are dealing with a good punch or a good kicker, you've got to get within this range to make that what we call tuite stuff work. And you're working with different sinus regions which run up and down the body. For example, you can find them running up and down the forearm. Like my partner has one, watch where I'm placing my thumb. You can find this on your own, you place it right in there. You can just find the little nerve endings. You've got them down here in your wrist here. And if you just take your own fingertips, relax your neck and just kind of probe, hit it kind of lightly, I found my carotid sinus, it's right in here. Everybody see where I'm pointing? And you can just tap there and you can just feel it. Whoa, boy, that hurts. And sometimes in the old days when someone would strike, what you would do is you'd work up and down that person's arm hitting those little sinus regions as you worked up the arm to, to strike him or worked up the leg to strike him. Now watch this particular movement that I want you to watch. I want to ask John to kneel down in front of me and this is how I want you to learn how to apply this chokehold against your partner. What we're doing is this. You're going to take one arm. I'm using my left arm in this case. And I'm lifting his chin up. I'm placing my arm underneath the chin, pointing his chin right in the pit of my elbow. And I'm squeezing towards him. Now as I pull up in this fashion with the arm, what I'm doing with my shoulder here is I'm pressing forward my shoulder. 
I'm going to take my opposite hand and watch. I'm going to grab my bicep and place this hand behind his head. See the position. And as I push forward on his head, I'm pulling up on the neck. Now, when you work with your partner, please have him hold his hands in front of him because sometimes a person will forget to slap his hands together. And as soon as you start to feel that pressure, where the blood has been shut off to the brain, I want you to slap your hands together, okay? Now just watch. As soon as you feel the pressure, I'm gonna apply it slowly, so there's no, it's easy to get, all right. Now, please stay away from the windpipe. A lot of these police officers are getting into trouble because when they're applying this chokehold, they're doing it this fashion. They're coming from this angle over here, and they're trying to come straight across. But what's happening is that form is slipping around underneath that windpipe, and you're suffocating the person, you're gonna kill somebody. Now, I want you to practice this a few times in slow motion with a partner so you can learn how to use this technique. Now, the Japanese were very good at this particular move. I remember back uh, during the 60s when we were having all the riots in this particular country, the FBI sent all over the world studying police films of how to deal with different mob scenes because what was happening in Germany was happening here was also happening in Japan. The kids would get out on the streets, they'd lock arms together like this and they'd sit down, there was nothing the police could do. Well, the police would come up trying to grab and pull them off, but they'd just hold on to each other. Well, what they were doing in Japan worked out quite uniquely. The police department would walk up to someone like that, they'd take this hand, they'd reach right over the head, the people would put their heads down like that so they couldn't get the choke hold on them, didn't work. Take the hands, put right in that eye socket, lift that neck up, go right underneath there, choke them out, drag them away one by one. Excellent, excellent, excellent technique. So the person doesn't give you access to the chin, reach that hand over there, hook that eye socket, lift it up, go right underneath the neck. Now watch how I apply this from a standing position, please. John, stand up, face me. Now there's a couple different ways I can utilize it. Face me from over here. Sometimes I'll reach out, grab a wrist here, pull it here, and step behind. My favorite way is this. I'll hit this shoulder, with this hand, and I'll hook this elbow with the cup of my hand. Now watch, as I do that, it spins him. Watch it, slow motion. It spins him slightly. Now don't you, don't go with it, but don't resist either. Now watch, as I spin him, I'm going to step a quarter step behind him. And watch as I step a quarter step behind him. Watch how fast is it. See, I'm already almost halfway around behind him. Now does everybody see my left arm? See, it's aiming right at that carotid sinus. And for that point out, pow, I come up and hit that carotid sinus, bam, a lot of times, they go right unconscious as soon as I hit that sinus region. From here, I step around behind them. Notice where I'm at. A lot of times when I'm behind, watch my right hand. I'll hit the spine to kind of break them back. Sometimes I'll pull the hair to break them back, or I'll take my foot, kick the back of the knee to break their balance. And from here, I'll lock them in place. As I lock them in place, I don't want to get hit in the groin with that free hand. Does everybody see that? The hand go right to my groin. So what I do is I'll spin them. I'll twist, twist, until I can sit them right down. Nine out of ten times they're unconscious before they hit the ground. And sometimes even if you lose the hole, like you slip out of hands, come right down on top of them, look where I'm at, slap your hands together as soon as you feel. You push down on the chest, lean your chest forward, slap your hands together. All right, see, because that's a choke hole in itself. Does everybody see what I'm doing? All this stuff hurts. I'm pushing down on his shoulder, leaning into him. That hurts terribly. Back to your position. This is a dangerous technique. For some reason, it's my favorite because it works. It has never failed me. Four out of five times when I've tried it realistically, when I hit that carotid sinus, the person went right unconscious, right on the spot before I even put the choke on. I remember one time I was down in Florida, I was sitting on the hood of a car outside of a nightclub. I had this 250 pound bouncer out there and we kind of goofed around with the boys. And he came up in front of me, I'm sitting on the hood of the car like this, he starts slapping me around. And I just grabbed his shoulder, spun him and hit that silence. And before I had the choke on, he dropped right to the ground. He was unconscious. And I said, what did you do? I didn't know what I did. <laughs> so, take it easy. When you're developing and rehearsing this technique, I will guarantee you one thing, that technique does work. And if you're ever in a realistic altercation where you don't want to execute a punch or an elbow strike or knee somebody in the groin or kick somebody, draw blood, create a bruise, or be in some kind of legal repercussions where somebody has a legal means of recourse against you, 
try that chokehold. And if you choke the person out, there's a couple ways you can revive them. You just pick them up and bounce them a couple times, lie them down, tap them on the spine. Uh, basically, most people will come to without any problems. Just make sure they don't swallow their tongue or put your hand in their mouth where they can bite your finger off or something like that. 